Good evening, everybody. Happy Sunday. My name is Graham Spicer, and welcome to Open Mic VO, where we set aside an hour on Sunday evenings and get together to chat about the voiceover business. So whether you're a brand new voice actor or you've been in it for decades, you're welcome to drop by on Sunday evenings and discuss topics of interest. A couple of house rules I just quickly want to go over. Number one is please keep yourself muted if you're not actively participating in the conversation. I really don't want to dissuade you from unmuting yourself and uh, asking a question or participating. But if you would just mute yourself when you're not actively participating, it means we don't have trouble with dogs barking and echo and feedback. That would be awesome. Thank you. The second thing is that we're all professionals here. Some of us are more professional than others in that we've been at it a little longer than others. But everybody here is a professional, so let's treat everyone with the respect that and with the professionalism that they deserve. And the third thing is that we record Open Mic VO and they get posted to YouTube. So if you um, have anything to share with us tonight, just remember that once the recording gets posted to YouTube, I really can't control where that content might end up. So with that said, I'm going to start unmuting people and let's get started with tonight's Open Mic VO. Just unmuting people here. Once you see that you're unmuted, if you'd like to be the first to get us started with a question or a comment or an observation about something going on in the business, please, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Hi, Graham. Hey, Dave, how are you doing tonight? Good, I'm doing fine, thanks. I remember uh, it must have been a month ago where one of the questions was uh, um, what percentage of your pay to play auditions get listened to? Okay. And I, want, I wanted to revisit that. Well, in my case, I seem, I think that I've got a pretty good batting average is that I'd be surprised if, I think that probably 75% of my auditions on voice one, two, three get listened to. And I would say that 90% of my auditions on Voices.com get listened to. At Bodalgo, which is the other uh, online casting site I'm a member of, I mean, it's almost 100%. Pretty much everything that I've done there has been listened to at least. Who else here participates in the pay-to-pay -pay sites, the online casting sites, and has some thoughts on how often your auditions get listened to? I know there's a, several people on here tonight that participate in online casting. So I'm curious what your uh, feedback is, if your results uh, mirror mine, or if you've got a different story. I, I went back on mine and it was probably, it was, it was probably 80% over the last four months or so. And right. I was kind of shocked at that. And surprisingly, I bet the ones that I auditioned for, um, and there's a lot of them was, I would bet that 80 plus percent were not completed. Really? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I have noticed that on voices.com frequently on voice one, two, three, it doesn't surprise me because it's, I don't think that there's even a way to mark a job as completed because the relationship is directly between you and the client. However, on voices.com, as far as I understand it, Talent doesn't get paid unless the job is marked completed. So all of these ones that say deciding, I'm not sure what that means. Because some of them, some of the ones that say deciding are, you know, literally four, five, six months old. So I don't know if that job just was abandoned or whether um, the talent was paid by Voices.com in some other way. I'm not sure. <laughs> It was just a phenomenon that I wanted to bring up again because it's a. I just did a quick cursory review of the last few months, and and those are the percentages. And I, it, I, it, is there that much kicking of the tires by clients? That's I guess that's the only way to explain it. As I understand it, though, at Voices.com, in order to post the job to begin with, 
you have to pay for it in advance on your credit card. So therefore you would think if a job was posted that it's going to get completed because the client paid for it, unless there's some provision for the client to be reimbursed if the job isn't completed to their satisfaction or something. I don't know. Um, there's a couple of people who I know would know and hope Bev standing is one of them. And hopefully Bev might pop in at some point this evening, in which case we'll ask her. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Just trying to make a note here. Okay, who else has got a question for us tonight or a comment? Um, anything to do with the voiceover business is more than welcome. Hey, Graham, it's Craig Williams. Hi, Craig. Uh, really, it's a question that a lot of people don't really like to spend a lot of time talking about, but um, regarding marketing, I just wanna put it out there and ask people what they find to be the best return on investment when it comes to marketing, whether it's Google ads, just cold calling, um, improving their SEO. What have people found that really made uh, a marked difference uh, for their investment? Well, I can tell you what my answer to that is, and it's not necessarily consistent with what many of the voiceover, you know, pundits would would suggest because there are many voice actors out there who swear that doing um you know social media marketing through linkedin and um you know twitter and they've been able to land some great jobs that way my experience isn't isn't successful when it comes to social media and i have largely relied on online casting sites as far as i'm concerned I want to fish where the fish are and the online casting sites, you know, many people get discouraged by them because, Oh, well, there's 50, 60, you know, 80 auditions for every job. Well, believe me out in the real world where your agents are submitting you, they're getting literally hundreds of auditions for a given job. So really if you're, you know, one of 50 or one of 70 at voice, one, two, three.com, that's actually not bad odds because a certain number of them are just going to be trash. They're going to be, you know, either people who are brand new to the business have taken no, no training. They don't understand how to record from home. They're using like a blue snowball microphone and they're doing it from their kitchen table. I mean, there's going to be a certain amount of submissions which are discounted immediately because they just aren't up to snuff either from a performance standpoint or from a technical standpoint. So maybe you're, you know, you know, if there was 50 auditions submitted, maybe you're one of 30 or 35 that are actually competitive for the job. You know, those odds aren't bad. And I have also discovered that there have been times I've auditioned for jobs and not won them, but the client came back to me you know, two weeks later and said, Hey, you auditioned for this job and you didn't get that one, but we really liked what you, what you did. And would you please do this job for us? So uh, I'm a big believer and a big supporter of the online casting sites um, when it comes to business development. Now it's important that you not rely solely on the online casting sites for business development. Um, I noticed that Bev standing has just um, checked in and Bev, I'm going to, I'd like to throw to you a question that was asked a couple of minutes ago and uh, to get your feedback on it. Someone was asking, what are the typical listened to rates for the various online casting sites? And a question that kind of followed from that was, um, there's lots of jobs on voices.com that don't get completed for some reason. And my understanding is that if the job's not marked completed, then the talent didn't get paid. What's with all these jobs that don't get marked completed? Well, first of all, hello. My internet is not the greatest on Sunday nights. Um, so I may fade out, but I'll do my best to stick around. Um, 
online casting. I don't know anything about the formula for Voices.com anymore about not being listened to. On Voice One Two Three, um, they could just go directly to you and not report that they've um, contacted you. Um, I sometimes pay attention to whether it's been listened to or not. Not often. Um, luckily, I don't have time to do that kind of follow up. Uh, what I do do is if there's an audition um, and I'm going to audition for it, you'll notice that they've listened to 15 out of 15, in which case they are listening to them as they come in. Uh, sometimes you'll see they've listened to 10 out of 40, and you can presume that they found their person within those 10. That's not always the case. Sometimes they just take a break, and they pass 10 on to their client, and they come back and go get me more. So I've auditioned for those. Um, but they aren't required, I don't believe, to close off a job when they've hired somebody. And that's a, you know, I'd like to see them fix that. But these people don't just necessarily post on one site. They might post on five different paid-to-play sites. And they're not going to bother to go back and mark them done. So does that help? Fantastic. It does help. And uh, how are you tonight, Bev? I'm not bad. <laughs> had a good week? I've had a very good week. It's been a little chaotic. This weather is wreaking havoc on my lungs, but... Oh, indeed. Yeah, I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. So, but other than that, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Bev, on a, on a daily basis, how many auditions are you doing on online casting sites? Recently? Well, <laughs> when you were at your busiest on the online casting sites, because I know that now you're so busy with recurring work that you're not always, you know, launching into, you know, 30 auditions a day. But back at your at your height, how many auditions were you doing a day? My average, I could do comfortably 15 an hour. So I could do, I would make sure by the end of the day that I had nothing in my in-tray for auditions. So you, I'd either delete them or I would do them all that I felt I should do. So you were doing as many as 40, 50 auditions a day? Yeah. Well, no, because I didn't do them all. Um, I, that being said, you've heard me say this before. I actually do read them all. Um, mm. I don't submit them all. Okay. So when you, so, when you say you read them all, as in, as in you record them all, you just don't submit? Uh, when I was starting out, I would, I would read them all because that was my practice. Yeah. And at the end, I'd go, oh, gosh, no, not submitting that. And off it would go. Um, I just hit delete and say, nope, not doing that. But even today, I read all the directions. I don't just go, oh, 100 bucks, get rid of it. Uh, certainly even on one, two, three, because those $100 could be an automotive sto uh, spot in a very small town, and they're going to do one a week. And they last a week on the air, and they're gone. Yeah. And that's the going rate. So I don't, I'm not that person that says I'll only look at jobs at $500 or more. I read every single one of them and choose from that. And I still go back to, if I find it interesting, I will audition. And whether I hit send or not comes down to, I might just not be feeling it that day. I might listen, read back the direction and go, no, I, I don't get this. And I'm not spending any more time on it. And I move on. Uh, Bev, how do you feel about social media for marketing? Do you, do you use LinkedIn at all? Do you use, you know, Twitter or Facebook to market yourself? Yes, no, sort of, yes. Uh, yes, I use LinkedIn. Um, they had a free webinar, actually, uh, Friday, I believe it was, talking about all the different ways uh, they're promoting, obviously, their product. But at the same time, they're letting you know all these different ways of making LinkedIn work. And a lot of what they said are what other people who promote social media say. And that's connect with them in a personal way. Don't say, hi, I'm Beth Standing. I'm a great voice talent and I can make your world better. Right. Um, I just this week uh, messaged, I, I through LinkedIn, said, I'd like to connect with you. And he came back with said, I will accept. 
and I went back into his profile and said, I'm really amazed. You went to the same college and university as my daughter in the same course, just a different year. Isn't that cool? Nice to meet you and walked away. He actually started a conversation with me more than anybody had ever by saying, hey, I'm a voice talent, let's talk. So the system does work. Um, again, it comes down to how much time I have to market myself. Um, I don't tweet often, but when I do, it's either repeating somebody else's wonderful thing, Voice is Strong, VO Alliance, that type of thing, um, just to stay in the connected world. But I've heard that Twitter is going to disappear, so I'm not putting a lot of effort to that. I have obtained work and got new clients from Facebook. Um, I don't use Snapchat or some of the other ones, but social media, yes, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave G's response in the question box to uh, the comment that that you made of doing, you know, potentially forty, fifty auditions a, a you know a day back in back in the day. <laughs> um, his response is, "Holy crap!" <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. But that's what I did. Um, now, now, in fairness, when I started and I was trying to make a living at this, I was working a full-time job. So, you know, would it be 40, 50? Probably not. But if I had nothing booked, I would spend three to four hours a night auditioning, however many I got in. At the beginning, they weren't 40. At the beginning, I wasn't a three-minute uh, audition person. But I've got it down now where, you know, if I've spent five minutes on any paid to play audition, I've spent too long. So that counts into that 40 or 50, right? I, I read it, I sucked, I hit delete and moved on. But that would be in that number. That still fits in my window of how many I tried to do. Uh, Joy, <laughs> Joy Baker's asking, Bev, um, do you get penalized on voice one, two, three for auditioning too much? And mm -hmm. I think I know the answer to that, but I know you know it better, so. <laughs> no, you know the answer quite fine. The answer is, as a premium member, yes, you do. Right. They don't want everybody uh, auditioning for everything. They want you to be selective. They want you to find what works for you so that your submit, sorry, breathing, so that you can submit your best work. I'm at a platinum member, and so therefore I am not penalized. And that's really the biggest benefit of the, you know, big expensive platinum membership, right? Is that you have no restrictions on what you're, what you audition for. None at all. Correct. Right. Good. Um, I wanted, uh, thanks very much, Bev. It's great to have you here with us on Sunday nights. I really appreciate your uh, participation. No, oh, you're welcome. Um, last week we were talking about, uh, demo producers and the name AJ McKay came up and AJ is just a phenomenal demo producer. And, uh, but I mistakenly uh, suggested that he was living in Louisville, Louisiana. Well, as it turns out, Donald Trump has not moved Louisville. It is still in Kentucky. So, uh, so AJ is actually working out of Louisville, Kentucky, if anyone is looking for him. Uh, who else has got a question or a comment for us tonight? It's an uh, open topic. Anything is, uh, anything is more than uh, welcome. Any questions about the voiceover business or a career as a voice actor? Uh, Joy, you're asking, how many auditions does Voice123 consider acceptable a day? As I understand it, the last I heard, and Bev, pipe in if I'm wrong, is if you do six, seven, eight auditions in a day, you're probably going to be okay. If you start doing 15 auditions in a day, you're going to find that you're going to be getting fewer and fewer potential auditions sent into your inbox. They will, they will throttle you down if you are submitting, you know, 15 auditions in a day. But if you do six, seven, eight, you should be okay. Hi, Graham. Hey, Gary. Uh, question. I guess my answer would be maybe because I'm not a premium me member, but if I get four requests for an audition for one, two, three, uh, I consider that to be a lot. So what am I doing wrong? Or is it because I'm not a premium member? So a premium, a, so there's the platinum membership, which is the very expensive, I think it's $5,000 membership. So right. 
the premium membership is the one that most of us have, which is I think like three hundred and ninety five dollars a year. That's the one I'm that's, that's the one I'm on then. So if you're only getting three or four auditions in a day, I find that highly unusual. I mean, I, you know, am active on the voice one, two, three platform. I, you know, some days I might do five or six auditions. Some days I only might do, you know, none or one. If uh, I get four, I consider myself lucky as far as uh, quantity is concerned. So that's funny because I, I will usually get 20 or 25 potential auditions in a day. Um, I didn't know if it was because maybe I have a lower voice or I, I don't know. I, I, Do you have any insights into that? I was just going to jump in and say, hi, Gary. Um, hi, Beth. One of the things that I used to do, and, and because I've been a platinum member for a couple of years on one, two, three, and they've changed some things up, I'm not too sure how it works now. But to give you a background, when I was on Voices and you had to match your profile to the jobs that were coming in and I was getting, uh, say, an 85% match or a 90% match, um, I figured out how to get a 100% match by working backwards. So when you're looking at the jobs, um, well, you're only getting, you're only seeing four. Go into your filters and say jobs I can't audition for on one, two, three. Do you know how to do that? I will figure it out. Okay, well, when you first open it, it says you have these jobs to audition for. I have a pull down bar that says filter. So okay. I can filter jobs I'm allowed to do, filter jobs I'm not allowed to do, and filter jobs I'm not allowed to do anymore because I've already submitted. And they'll I think come I in. Saw, and I'm sorry. I think I saw that when I first signed in. So you may be able to access those and read them and find out what they're looking for. Okay. And then adjust your profile accordingly. Maybe you're not giving them the keywords they need to find you. Okay, good answer. I, I just thought I would pipe in an ass. So coming from someone with more, a lot more experience than I have, I appreciate no that. No guarantees that will work, Gary, but it's certainly worth a try. That's how yeah, I well, going to do stuff. It's worth doing more than three. I mean, to have the ability to do more than three <laughs> a day. So thank you. You're welcome. So 22 minutes past the hour now, and uh, we're talking about anything to do with the voiceover business. So if you have any questions or any comment, commentary whatsoever on performance-related issues, or uh, maybe it's your home studio, you've got a question about your home studio, the online casting sites, anything is uh, wide open for discussion tonight. Hey, Graham, I'd like to follow up on uh, the pay to plays, if you don't mind. Can you hear me, Graham? Yeah, I know. We can hear you. Please go okay, ahead. Cool. Uh, basically, going on what Bev said uh, was quite interesting. When she first started off, she was doing her, her auditions at night. So I'd like to ask everybody, do they see a marked improvement on the jobs that they win when they submit a lot earlier? Uh, obviously, most of the jobs get posted between uh, eight and five uh, during the day so if you do get in early everybody knows that you are supposed to get in early but did they see a marked difference when they did well again i'll give you my two cents worth and then you know maybe bev or um you know larry hudson's on here he might have some thoughts on this as well um my two cents is this is that there seems to be some benefit to being in early. If, if you're one of the first uh, auditions listened to, you sort of set the standard to which other auditions need to exceed. And, um, and J. Michael Collins actually did uh, some research into this at, at one point a few years ago. And there was a, a marginal advantage to being in early. But it's only a marginal advantage. And, you know, there are still lots of people who win jobs who were, you know, the 47th of 50 auditions that were listened to. So the, the important factor really is do the auditions get listened to or not? Uh, Bev earlier had been saying that if the client was looking for 50 auditions and 
they had li- and they had received 50 auditions or they had received 40 auditions and had listened to 10, then that's usually a pretty strong indicator that they found what they were looking for and have awarded the job. But if there's 40 auditions and zero have been listened to, I will absolutely audition for that project. And you can do that in the evening. You don't need to you know, be one of the first in. As long as the audition gets listened to, you've got a shot at it. And I don't think that you should you know, automatically be discouraged if you're not one of the first 10 submissions. Bev, if I, does that make sense? Or do you know something better there? No, I think that's great advice. Um, I just recently last week got a job because I was one of one. They listened to one person, went perfect, let's do it. They weren't being fussy. Um, or I just matched what they were looking for and I happened to be the first one in. Um, if, if they're, again, I'll repeat, if they're listening, they might come in batches of 10. They'll listen to 10, but they've received 40. They then submit them to their client and the client goes, nope. So they go back and listen to 10 more. You don't know if the job's been handed out or not. So I always audition if I think the job is interesting. And you're talking to somebody who sees a lot of auditions. If you don't see a lot of auditions, why wouldn't you audition anyway? As Graham, you said earlier, a lot of times they'll hear your voice and go, it's not really right for this job, but let's keep that person in mind. Mm -hmm. So get your voice in front of them. Let them hear you. Let them hear what you can do. And don't be so concerned about whether you're doing it at night, because if that's when you have time to do it, you'll do a better job. Um, I didn't have time in the day. I was out in a construction site. I couldn't pull over and I didn't have travel gear and whatnot. I had a pillow for it. So I had to wait till I got home. So that's when I did them and I booked them. You know, I had a story once and I honestly can't remember, but I was like the 164th person and I got the job. So that, and that was early on. And I just went, I am never not going to audition if I think I can do the job. So. There. Absolutely. And I think what I've noticed is that um, with the North American sites, because obviously I'm, I'm British, but I'm in North America. So for voices, one, two, three voices.com um, near enough, the majority of all of my auditions get listened to, but for Bedalgo, uh, because all of the British people are getting in their auditions before I get there, they don't seem to be listened to as much. I don't know how that works for me because I get probably a third of my work as a Brit. I book off of Bodalgo and I book off of 123. So I don't know. Fantastic. Well, Bev, once again, thank you for your, for your insights. Um, who else has got something for us tonight? Who else has got a question, comment? Um, Bev, I'll throw this back to you again. Kay is asking, how much editing do you typically do on a P2P audition? Um, I edit it as if I want them to hear the, the final spot. Um, I don't slate. I go right into the job. Unless I'm doing two takes, you might hear me say two takes, boom, into the spot. I get rid of my breaths mostly. Uh, E-learning, I might leave the ones in in the sentence, but not between a sentence because I don't want them distracted. If they want my breaths in in a job, they'll tell me that. But uh, I don't do a lot of processing. I normalize it, uh, make sure my clicks are out, and that the words are right. And that's about it. Well, you say you're doing, you can do 15 in an hour. That's one every four minutes. So clearly you're not spending a lot of time editing. No, I'm also not submitting five minutes of work. It's less than 30 seconds. Right, right. So keep that in mind, yeah. No high pass filter. No, I don't do that. Larry Hudson, I see you're online. How much time do you spend editing each audition. I know you don't really play on the online casting sites because you're union, if I remember right. But um, how much time? No, I'm, I'm on V123. Oh, are you? Okay. So oh, much, yeah. Oh, yeah. How much time do you spend editing? Um, well, you know, I have a really simple rule, and it's a great question. I was on with Mark Cashman today. We did a little free webinar talking about audition do's and don'ts. And, uh, and this topic came up. And I asked the question to everybody, why is it that we edit at all? You know, like, why do we need to edit? 
and when you get down to it, the reason what we're doing when we edit is removing imperfections, which leads us to the big question, which is why we need to remove the imperfections. And it's a real simple answer because Bev just said it. It's a distraction from the message, the performance. So the idea is, I, I listen. I when I edit an audition, I might spend a little bit more time on paid work, but you're not going to hear the difference. I might, but you're not, because I spend the same amount of time. And typically for a thirty second, it'll take me about three minutes, or not, no, not three minutes. It'll take me roughly five times the amount of the finished. So about two and a half minutes to do a 30 second spot is what I spend on editing. Now, now Larry, I'm intrigued by this free webinar you did. Tell, tell us a little bit about that and was it recorded? And is there Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want, you know what, if people want to get a copy of it, it was two hours. I mean, Mark, you know, Mark Cashman is the, the king of the basics, man. He, you know, he just gets right to the basics and, Knowing everything that's in Mark's head would be a <clears throat> really good thing, and I'm happy to send out. It's it's a free webinar. I'll I'll send the uh, I'll send the the MP3 to anybody. Uh, you can just put my email up if you want to uh, use Larry Hudson at boheaven.com. Okay, just as you can hear, I'm in the car. Yeah. I'm in the car. Larry, I'm driving home from Maryland. Larry Hudson at at voheaven.com dot com got it yeah and, and i'm happy to send it to anybody it was a really fun webinar we did and um so what was the what was the theme of it again what was the main the main points auditions audition do's and don'ts okay, cool what to expect kind of how to look at auditions when you're in your booth at home and what it's like when you uh, are in a in a third party you know in a, in, a, in a regular recording studio. And by the way, I'm about to go through Red Rock Canyon and I know I'm going to get disconnected. Okay. But I'll be back. Thank <laughs> you so much, Larry. All right. Bye-bye. Drive safely. All right. Who else has got a question, a question for us tonight? Good evening. Can you hear me? Hey, Joy. Hey. Um, so I was wondering, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to sign up for a membership on Voice123 or Bidalgo. And I was wondering if anyone could help me understand um anything that would help me choose is it one or the other yeah where do you live? start off where do you live minnesota then you definitely want voice one two three okay why because you're going to have 10 times the number of opportunities on voice one two three that you will on badalgo but right. is it's a wonderful it's run by a wonderful guy has the best interest of voice actors at heart but he just doesn't have nearly as he's based in Germany. He doesn't have right. many North American jobs. So. Okay. I've heard that they had different um, emphasis, but if it's really just a lot of numbers difference, then that makes it easy. They, they, they do have a bit of a different emphasis. The jobs typically pay um, on average, they probably pay as well or better than voice one, two, three, but not enough where I would say, I, I think that voice one, two, three is the, is the obvious answer for you. It's just, okay. it, it's, you're just going to have so many more opportunities to audition for there. That was my guess. Thank you for confirming that. Other questions, other comments. Graham, I see that there's a comment about uh, VO Planet, if you want to address that. Um, if you can. It says in the chat, anyone yeah, checked out no. the new VO Planet? Now, my experience with VO Planet is a few years old now, and it was run by a lady named Donna, and I was very, very unhappy with my experience. Now, my understanding is that VO Planet has been taken over by... Um, uh, Donna Summer has has um, either sold it or reassigned it off to um, a new person who is who is running it now, and it seems to be relaunched. And you know, it it it, it seems to be spoken about in far higher regard now than it used to be. 
Uh, Bev, do you have any more insights into it? Are I you do. Working? Yes, I am. Um, I, I was the same as you. I was on it a while ago and it was not really great. Uh, it has been purchased by a gentleman by the name of Kevin West who used to work on it. Uh, he used to work for Donna, I guess. And right. he bought it. He has revamped it. There is, um, I think, I want to say, I think it's $199 a year. He had a technical glitch and has had to rebuild the site. He is so open and honest. If you want to talk to him, you just you can pick up the phone. You can email him. He'll get back to you. The jobs that are posted uh, when he first started it back up were amazing. They were good prices. There's no bidding. There's no, hi, this is who I am, and I'm telling you all about me. You don't even have to do that. You just read the audition and upload it. End of statement. Now, in saying that, I also don't know of anyone who's actually booked off his site yet. So I can't tell you what the process is beyond that. Okay. But as far as the starting point, very impressive. What about the voice realm? Voice realm I'm on, and it is bad-mouthed by many people. I have never had any issues. I always get paid. I've heard that's a problem. Some of the jobs are lower paying. I don't audition for those. There's no direct contact to the client unless they ask you for it or you say to they you say to them this would be easier to work directly but i can't give you my contact information however you can give me yours so there's ways to try and communicate if you need to but the system is very straight cut again there's no bidding this is how much you're going to get we're going to take a percentage so you pay for a membership and they take a percentage but it's you submit through them they say yep done here's your money okay and i haven't heard any negative marketing from them lately either so maybe they're listening yeah they 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 kind of stumbled into a few public relations faux pas back um over the past couple of years but it seems to be that they have uh um you know they've learned to keep their mouths shut and just stick to their knitting and it seems to be working okay for them Other questions, other commentary? Once again, just want to remind you, if you want access to that free webinar on audition do's and don'ts that was conducted today by Mark Cashman and our very own Larry Hudson, uh, just email Larry. His email address is in the chat box. Just email him directly and say, hey, you know, I'm from um, Open Mic VO, and can you please send me a link to the MP3? And Larry says that he will be glad to do that. Okay. Who else has got something for us tonight? Hi, Graham. I got a question. Hey, how are you doing, Sonny? I'm doing great. Doing great. Uh, this is a performance question on uh, the e-learning. Uh, with all the types of e-learning that uh, we might get hired for, right? Like there's the pure video, in which the whole thing is narration. There's the click-through and text-based. There's the interactive gamification. With all those types of uh, e-learnings, aren't all those types of e-learning uh, don't they require a, a conversational read? And if, it, and if not, when is it not appropriate to do a conversational read? There definitely seems to be a trend towards um, e-learning becoming much more conversational. Um, the rather instructional kind of tone that, that used to be commonplace in e-learning, you have to speak slowly so people understand you and have a chance to, you know, you know, take in the information. And, you know, all of that seems to be going by the wayside. And e learning people, like e learning producers, seem to be increasingly looking for a conversational read, just as if we were reading a, an audio book or reading 
you know, a, a piece of commercial copy. So you're definitely right in identifying this, this trend of being more conversational for sure. It also sort of depends on the genre, I think. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's like a test kind of thing, uh, one of the things that I have been told about that is if it's like, uh, is it A, B, C, or D, you don't want to use your voice inflection to give away the answer. You want it <laughs> as dry as possible. I had never considered that, James, but that makes a ton of sense. It's one of the things I learned from a somebody that I probably shouldn't mention on uh, on this call. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, um, okay. It, it, I figured it out. I think. Yeah, it depends on on what the genre actually is. I mean, the other thing too is if it's a foreign language, like English as a uh, second language kind of thing you do have to speak very slowly and very deliberately. So that's not a conversational kind of thing. You're, you're uh, trying to give them proper grammar, proper um, pronunciation. So you're not um, um, talking in the way that you would talk to your best friend by slurring words or talking very fast or, or uh, not enunciating as, as um, succinctly as you would uh, for somebody who doesn't really understand English. So you want to be deliberate in that point. So it, it, it's, a, it's another one of those that kind of depends. Is, if, is, is my guess correct that it probably would have been David Goldberg at Edge Studio that said that? No, Tom Deere. <laughs> Tom Deere at Edge Studio. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, listen, Edge is a, a great resource for many, many voice actors. And, no, and, those... and Tom is, is a wonderful resource if, you ever, if you're into doing e-learning and you want to learn about e-learning he's the guy to go to because he, he makes a living at it. He just yeah. He does it. a ton, a ton of it. That's, and he knows the ins and outs of the different kind of genres. Um, it's, it's one of those things I never thought about. Um, you know, if you were, uh, doing uh, a textbook text, uh, test kind of thing and you had to give, is it a, is it B, is it C or is it D not giving away the answer? It's just gotta be flat. So um, to those of you who are looking for Tom, you can get him through edgestudio.com. And his name is Tom Deere, D-H-E-E-R-E. -E -E. And the H is silent. The H is silent, uh, as he likes That's to say. That's his spelling point. The H is silent, but I'm not. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let me actually just, I'll pop that down into the chat box. And Edge Studio, you can get just simply at edgestudio.com. Yeah, Edge yeah. Studio, and, singular, and, not uh, plural. A couple of webinars that Tom and I have done um, recently, um, I've conned, I mean, asked Tom to show up at, and we just let him go. <laughs> he likes to talk, so we just let him go. <laughs> yeah. And um, are these webinars that are available somewhere? If someone was looking to, they're they're on the Edge Studio website. They're the uh, the talk time. Uh, okay, so our, our so for website. those of you who aren't aware, after you know this uh, open mic bo runs from eight until nine, from nine until ten, there's a very similar um, a very similar type of uh, webinar that goes on called Talk Time, which is done by Edge Studio. Um, so if you go back into the Talk Time. Um, the, the talk time uh, back, you know, the, back archives catalog. They, the archives that they have on the Wedge, Edge Studio website, and they're they're really kind of hard to find. Um, they they don't make it easy for you to find them, but they are there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I've talked to to David about that and say, you know, you have to make this easier for people. But um, uh, yeah, we've had at least two with Tom so far in the last couple of months. And his information, his information on e-learning is invaluable. Fantastic, cool. Um, who else has got a question or a comment for us tonight? Oh, by the way, the one tonight is on tech. So if you want to know, you know, microphones, that kind of stuff, um, give us a give us a listen. Okay, and how do people participate in that, James? I will try to put a link in the thing here. For you. Fantastic. If you could do that, that'd be great. Just put a link to it into the chat box. That'd be awesome. So who else has got a question for us, a comment? Any question uh, with regards to the voiceover business is more than welcome. 
Hi, Graham. I have a question. Hi, Kay. Hi. Um, so I'm currently working with a voiceover coach, and she's been um, she's been great, and she's been in the business for uh, quite a long time. Um, but I get the sense she's um, kind of old school about um, the business, and so she's been encouraging me. Um, that I need to do everything I can to get an agent, but she's very much against the pay to play sites. And um, she's basically said, you know, go ahead and audition because I've, I've won a few jobs on voice one, two, three. And she said, that's fine. You can do it until you can build up your resume and then get an agent and then immediately get off those sites because um, there are some agents that will that will fire you if they find out that you've been on those sites. So that sounds a little scary. And I'm just kind of wondering, you know, I mean, how to really navigate that aside from the fact that I don't really feel like I want to get off that site. I certainly think it's a little alarmist. I don't think that there's, you know, certainly voices.com is very unpopular with the majority of agents out there. But voice one, two, three, most agents have no concerns, what, especially non-union agents. I assume you're non-union, Kay? Correct, yes. Yeah. I mean, welcome to 2018 in the non-union world where, you know, unless you live in New York or in Los Angeles, it's difficult to make a living as a voice actor if you don't have at least some presence on the, uh, on, you know, one or more of the online casting sites. Um, it's how most non-union actors get started. You may not stay there forever, uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, I've been a, a full-time voice actor now for eight years, and I still, you know, work the, the pay-to-play sites on a daily basis. Um, and many of my, you know, ongoing, you know, best clients, you know, from a financial standpoint, I was first introduced to, or they were first introduced to me through online casting sites. So um, I, I think it's a little alarmist to say that, no, 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 they're terrible. You have to leave them uh, because it's increasingly, you know, they're not going away and it's an important resource for voice actors and, you know, they're becoming increasingly important uh, as a resource for both voice actors and for those looking for voice actors. And if you're worried that you're going to get, that an agent that you have at some point will fire you because you're on it, all you need to do is talk to your agents. Maybe there are some that would have an objection to it, but the vast majority won't, and all you need to do is talk to them and see. Okay. That makes sense. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a little scary hearing that. She definitely had mentioned that her agent had actually said that to her, that if, that, that if they found out that she was ever using any of those sites, that they would cut her loose. And I just thought that was well, let me kind of crazy question. currently is, in today's... Is she union? Um, that does make a difference. You know what? That's a good question. I'm not sure about that you know what i think she actually i think she is and maybe okay, that's so why she's in the union and she's yeah. saying that if you do the pay-to-play yeah. sites and you're accepting non-union jobs unless you've run ficor that your your agent will drop you mm -hmm. that could be the case okay. because they're not making any money agents aren't to be your friend agents are there to make money from you right they, you know, okay. if she's in the union, they get their 10% cut and they want you to audition for the big jobs that for the big money so they can get their 10% cut and that's all they can get. Now, if it's a non-union agent, they can take anywhere up to 30% if they, if, if you allow them to, but for a union agent, if they're franchised with SAG-AFTRA, they can only take 10%, but they want you auditioning and they want you booking big jobs. So they have a big commission. So if you're doing little pay to play things for a hundred dollars here or $300 there, and you know, even though they're not getting their $30 cut, they may not be too happy with you. That and, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you. And if you're on Fiverr and considering that one of those sites, that has a huge stigma against it. And that will be the big <laughs> But assuming that you're talking about the legitimate side, of yes. The universe. Then, then we're all good, you know. Yes. Yes. Just voice one, two, three. That's it. Yeah. 
that's all I'm currently on. Yes. Very, very few agents. And I can't think of a single non-union agent is going to have any concerns whatsoever with you being on voice one, two, three. There are, there are a handful of agents out there called the VO Agents Alliance that really have a, uh, a prejudice against Voices.com and a well-founded, a well-founded concern about Voices.com. So they're very unhappy when, if they see their talent on Voices.com. But Voice123, none of these non-union agents have any issue with you participating on that website. Graham, it's Larry again. Hey, Larry. I just want to add something really quick. I think it's really important to understand that there are there's a couple of different echelons of or, or sort of groups of agencies. And you have regional agencies, which sadly, many of the regional agencies, I guarantee within the next five to 10 years, might not be around anymore. And then you have the, you know, the, better, the better regional agents. And then you have the major players, which truly there are only a handful in Los Angeles and New York. So I would really take with a grain of salt what your coach is saying, and I agree with everything that everybody has said. Listen, the, the regional agent is the reason why there's so many of them that will not be around in five to ten years is because what will be around is the pay-to-plays. Because, you know, it's sort of like, do you use a travel agent anymore? No, probably not. You just go online. And that's the world that we live in. And that's where our business is gone. And there's a lot of business that is being done. Listen, I was the voice of Kubota, Kubota Tractor for three and a half years. It was, this work was major work. Like big, you know, big money. I did all their radio and TV. And eventually they always are going to make a change and go with a different voice. And guess where they went to get their new voice? Voice.com. I mean, excuse me, voice one, two, three. And, you know, that's just the way it goes. So let me tell you, there are major jobs being found and worked and regular clients, just like Graham says. One of my, I still have a client from 2012 that I got as a, as a, a letter from B123, and they're still my client here, you know, six years later. So, again, just be un, understand the, that there are two different ranges of agencies. There's regional agents, and then there's major agencies. And you want to be clear about which one is which. You okay, know, yep. My first agent found me on voice123.com. Um, so so there, there is an example of an agent not just endorsing an online casting site, but actually used it to try and find talent to stock, stock her agency. So I have a question about voicebank.net. What has happened with that? Is it just gone now? I know that voices.com bought it, but is it just gone? Does it not exist anymore? Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's totally been rolled into voices.com. So that's, that's an absolute shame because it was a great resource just to listen to demos. If you were going to produce a demo, I remember uh, years ago when I was doing my first demo was just listening to other guys to see what they were doing. I mean, it was a great resource and it's just gone. Yeah. I mean, all of those demos are still on the, you know, they're all, they were all imported into the voices.com website, but voices.com won't allow us to use it as a resource to go and listen to them anymore. I don't like them. <laughs> there are many, many people who don't like them. I agree, James. You know, uh, this is Sonny. That's a good question. Where is a good resource to uh, listen to demos to, to check them out? I mean, the best, the best way I know of to do it is to actually go to the agency sites uh, who do voiceover and they will have a, uh, a link to uh, the voice talent that they have on hand and they will have their demos listed on their websites. So um, that's barring going to voice bank because that's what voice bank did was they had every uh, voice actor in the world who had an agent, uh, their demo was on there. Um, but now you basically have to go to the specific agencies or, you know, and, and listen to demos on their websites. Is there any listing 
of voiceover agencies or do you just start searching Google for them? No, there is a publication called uh, Call Sheet and it's put out by Backstage Magazine. It's on the Backstage website and it's very expensive, <laughs> but it has a listing of every, every agency, uh, I think even non-union agencies, but mostly franchised agencies, uh, East and West Coast and some in Canada. Um, it's called Call Sheet, C-A-L-L-S-H-E-E-T, and they will have a listing of who the voice agent is and what somebody listed CESD and Vox Talent. I mean, those are some of the big ones uh, yeah, that that's are in the me, That's the me chat actually box. putting those in there. Yeah. And again, if you just want to go and listen to some of the best demos, then go to these agencies that I'm type, typing in here. Those are good places to try. Yeah. Put Stuart Talent up there too. That's the one I'm with. <laughs> Great stuff, guys. Thank you. There you go. Fantastic. Um, time to slip in one more question, and it was submitted actually uh, using the, the chat box, and that is accounting. What, what are people doing for accounting? Are you using any sort of specific specialized software for billing and invoicing, tax management? I just use QuickBooks online, and I know there's many voice actors who use FreshBooks online, which is sort of a QuickBooks-like interface. Um, I know that there are some um, voiceover specific, uh, voiceover specific um, um, applications out there. I know that Gravy for the Brain, which is a British company that does online voiceover training, a great resource actually for those who are new to the voiceover business. They have a um, customer relationship management slash billing invoicing feature built into their web platform, which is really quite strong. I know that there is, um, oh, what's the one that is done by Danny States and uh, voiceover view, it's called voiceoverview.com. Voiceoverview. Does voiceoverview have any sort of accounting components i thought it was just a crm no it does have some invoicing like estimating and invoicing stuff built into it so it's worth checking out for sure awesome yeah okay well we're out of time it's you know just coming up on nine o'clock thank you all so much for your participation tonight good um active uh conversation um this will be posted to the uh, YouTube channel within the next day or two. If you need to go back and check anything out, I'll also make sure I post the the uh, chat box. All of this, all the info that was uh, shared through the chat box will be in the show notes on YouTube. So uh, thank you so much. Have a great week. Book lots of work. Do lots of auditioning, and we'll speak with you again next Sunday night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>